So let me begin with Ukraine. A couple of things. First of all, what are Putin's intentions? We have individuals on radio, on TV, who write columns who claim to be able to know what Putin's intentions are. Well, I know what his intentions are. How do I know what his intentions are? Because he wrote about it in July of last summer, seven months ago. And among other things, in this 5,000-word essay, which has not probably been discussed with you in many newsrooms or by many commentators, just because they're lazy, uh, he makes it abundantly clear that this is about more than Ukraine. To him, Ukraine doesn't exist. It's always been Russian, that the Ukrainians are not a separate people. They are Russians. And he talks about more than that. He talks about Poland and Hungary. Really, there should be no Poland and Hungary either. The Balkans, nah, they're Russian too. He's not so much Stalin, well, he is in his tactics, but not in terms of his territorial gains. He's more Catherine the Great, if you will. And this, this piece that he wrote, or that somebody wrote for him that he signed and embraced, is on the Kremlin site. Uh, and it also goes back 1,200 years, 1,200 years. So much like Adolf Hitler, who went in the Sudetenland and other areas because he said there are Germans there and they speak German, Putin has used the same tactic in that respect. Now, what about America? Does America have national security interests in Ukraine or in Europe, in NATO? 85% of the American people surveyed just a few days ago in a massive survey done by Fox said, yes, Ukraine matters to the United States, 85% to 14. So those who say we have no national security interest or interest at all in Ukraine are in a very, very small minority. How about Zelensky? Is he all this bad guy that he's that he's said to be with Russian propaganda and his surrogates repeating their talking points. 76% of the American people approve of Zelensky. That's pretty good, as most politicians in America. And should we do more to help the Ukrainians? Maybe get them some MiG fighters so they can actually do more damage to the Russian invaders and the uh, Putin military machine? 63% of the American people say, yes, we should do more. And a huge percentage of Republicans can be found in all those figures. So the outliers are not the people who say, maybe we ought to do more to help our Ukrainian friends. And we're not talking about indiscriminate intervention. We're not talking about stupid things like sending troops into Ukraine or having our jets shoot down Russian jets over Ukraine in a no-fly zone. We're talking about things that can be done, you know, the way Ronald Reagan brought down the Soviet Union the way Reagan supported the, uh, uh, the Northern Alliance and others against the Soviets in, um, in Afghanistan, the way we took on the Soviets in Angola and in our own hemisphere and on and on and on, that these are things that can be done and should be done. We are not the imperial power, ladies and gentlemen. We are not the colonialists. Some of these American firsters sound like American lasters who seem to blame us, and they will point to some American blunders military blunders, and I agree with them in many respects. They'll point to Afghanistan. They'll point to Iraq. They'll point to Libya. Uh, they'll point to um, Vietnam. They'll point to other things. But let me tell you something. That has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on today. Nothing whatsoever. Who is, who is the aggressor? It's Putin. He's slaughtering innocent civilians. He's blowing up cities. One town on the Black Sea is 90% leveled. Wherever Putin goes, this is what he does. He's destroyed Syria with his favorite genocidal maniac there. He's destroyed the, the Chechen area. Um, he is destroying Ukraine. That's what he does. He fancies himself uh, Catherine the Great, but when it comes to tactics, he fancies himself Stalin. He is a man who has killed his way to the top. He's a man who assassinates in order to hold on to power. He's now shuffling the decks around him, his hand-picked generals, his hand-picked uh, uh, Stasi types and so forth. He's removing them and replacing his yes-men. Some of them are disappearing. Some of them are trying to leave the country. That's what we're up against. And so uh, now we get this stuff that the United States should not escalate tensions. Excuse me? Yeah, we are not supposed to escalate tensions. Well, how are we escalating tensions? By helping an ally? An ally that's trying to defend itself, trying to save its people who are being slaughtered unprovoked by a madman, a genocidal maniac who believes that Russia should control two-thirds of Europe 
because he goes back 12 centuries and dreams up a, a bastardized idea of ancient history? No, I don't think so. Well, he keeps threatening to use nuclear weapons. Well, that's amazing. He's a war criminal. He's involved in horrific atrocities. Um, he is threatening to use nuclear weapons now and then. And yet people in this country, mostly the Putin wing, are saying, how dare you talk about the potential of taking out Putin? So he's a war criminal. He's committed atrocities. He's, a, he's committing genocide, not the first time. He threatens the U.S. with nuclear weapons. And he shouldn't be taken out? That's about as stupid as it gets. I'm not saying we have to take him out, but we can encourage others to do exactly that. And maybe that's what's going on. Have you heard the head of his military has been missing for, for about two weeks and nobody knows where he is? Hmm. I wonder if they already tried. We'll see. And I hope they succeed if they do. So Putin laid out a pretext for what he's doing. Those who are confused, some intentionally so, on what his ultimate plans are, should read what the man wrote, or at least purportedly wrote, but certainly embraces. It was on the Kremlin website. He tells you what he wants to do. Now, there's also this effort to smear Zelensky, the president of Ukraine. So anytime something happens in war, it is used by the, uh, by the Putin wing of the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and the media and so forth. They don't tell you that Putin has locked up his main political opponent for another nine years on uh, Trump up embezzlement charges. They don't tell you about any of that stuff uh, or that uh, all the assassinations that he's been involved in, both in his country and outside his country, including in Washington, D.C., at some hotel. No. And, of course, he's trying to assassinate the president of Ukraine. He sends in Chechnyan uh, headhunters. He sends in the Wagner Group, which... Uh, is his favorite personal little militia, and so forth and so on. Uh, but they're trying to smear him, and there's a great piece in the Cato Institute commentary by Kathy Young, who goes into this, how Ukraine has been attacked and how Russia has been promoted by, by the likes of uh, the late Professor Stephen Cohen in The Nation, Max Blumenthal in Salon, Seamus Milne in The Guardian, and Saurabh Amari in the American Conservative, which is basically a Buchananite publication in many respects. This isn't about rhinos and the Republican warmongers and neocons. Really? Neocons. You know, neocons is a pejorative for Democrats, Jewish Democrats, who switched over to Reagan because they supported his approach to the Soviet Union. This is a phrase that is used purposely to create the impression about who's behind this, Jewish intellectuals. But then if you raise it, say, hey, isn't it funny? Every time we speak, we're accused of anti-Semitism. No, nobody's accusing you of anti-Semitism unless you're using phrases that suggest you are. As for the Washington war machine, there is no Washington war machine. The United States military is, is being uh, depleted of resources. The men and women in the military are not treated like... Uh, uh, with respect as fighting men and women. Uh, they're being taught critical race theory. If there was a Washington war machine, uh, the opposite would be done, wouldn't it? Have there been blunders in our foreign policy? Yes, but there's no collusion or conspiracy between federal contractors, the neocons, and the Washington war machine. And these events in the past have nothing to do with what Putin's doing today. Again, you want to know what Putin's doing today? Read what he says. But these, these attacks on Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, who I don't know and I've never spoken to, uh, you can hear them echoed by Syrian dictator Assad uh, in Al Jamanir here. He, he calls him a Zionist Jew who supports the Nazis. Communism, Islam, Nazism, China, Russia, or anyone else are not the enemies of the West, he proclaimed. If they serve the interests of the West, they are friends. In other words, they have zero principles. Sounds like some people in our own country. The ugliest truth of them all, and not many people know this, is the lie that the West and Zionism oppose Nazism, he said. Not many people know that the leaders of the Nazis in Ukraine, Nazi organizations that closely collaborated with Hitler in terms of security, military, and ideology, were driven out of Ukraine at the end of World War II, some of them Europe, and some of them to America. This past September, some of that's true, by the way about Nazism in Ukraine. 
And some of it's true about Nazism in the United States and anti-Semitism in the United States in places like Brooklyn or the Bronx, you might recall, and during the Black Lives Matter riots, including in Los Angeles, and when Hamas was shooting missiles uh, into Israel and, uh, and the activities that took place in New York, which were quite horrific, and that the number one victim of hate crimes in this country are Jews. But this is a fantastic country. This isn't a country that harbors Nazis, nor is Ukraine a country that harbors Nazis, even though there are elements within their society, as there are many elements within the Russian society, and there are many elements in the Democrat Party, as far as I'm concerned, if you listen to some of the more extremists in that party. But that's not my point. My point is there's two types of opponents to supporting Ukraine, really, two broad categories. Number one are your typical pacifists, code pink types, who are just wrong, and in many ways, moronic. You know, we got a lot of things to do here in the United States. We can't be paying attention to other countries. We have our own border to secure. Why would we worry about the border with Ukraine? Uh, excuse me. We should worry about both borders. We should be securing our border and worry about the border with Ukraine. We had a recent president, Donald Trump, who understood that. And these extremists are nothing like Donald Trump. In fact, many of them condemned Donald Trump when he took out Soleimani, said it was very provocative with the Iranians. Why are we involved? Even though Soleimani is responsible for the death and casualties of thousands and thousands of Americans. You see the Wounded Warriors program. You see Tunnels to Towers program. Many of the people that they're helping have head injuries, have lost body parts as a result of what the Iranian regime did with Suleiman running the terrorist operations. They attacked Trump when he also attacked the Syrians and, and attacked their airport, killed several hundred Russians, as I understand it, who were, who were manning that airport, when they were gassing their own people. So Donald Trump is not one of these, these uh, pacifist, uh, isolationist types. But there is a doctrine of that sort. And then there's a different one, which really is a, a Putin-type mouthpiece operation, propagandists in this country. And they are involved in the sort of thing that Assad is, trashing Zelensky. They're involved in the sort of thing uh, uh, that Assad is in other respects, too. That is, uh, defending um, Putin in terms of he needs space. He needs his space, and historically, they needed space. And of course, they come up with, with nonsense like, well, Ukraine uh, wanted to join NATO, so therefore, Putin wanted to put an end to it. Ukraine was not going to join uh, NATO. Ukraine just said it wouldn't join NATO, and its cities are still being obliterated. That said, the Ukrainians are fighting like heroes. They're doing everything they can to fight the Russians. Uh, the Russian military machine is, is vile in the way it attacks cities and innocent citizens. But when it comes fighting man to man on the battlefield, it's not as strong as they thought. So in my view, the Ukrainians deserve all the support they can get if we can contain this war to that part of the world, that would be a good thing. So it doesn't bleed into the NATO countries. So it doesn't bleed into Taiwan with Xi seeing what's taking place. And of course, with Biden arming the Iranians with nuclear warheads, this is a separate and wholly grave issue that needs to be more fully addressed. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.